mornings from 10. Gail Lofthouse. BBC Radio Leeds. West Yorkshire Sport Daily. BBC Radio Leeds. Now, the town of Halifax is frequently represented on our TV screens, isn't it? Through such dramas as Happy Valley and Ackley Bridge. But its rugby league club could soon be getting the big screen treatment because our next guests here on West Yorkshire Sport Daily are attempting to crowdfund a documentary film to celebrate the club's remarkable illustrious 150 year history. We are joined by producer Linda Kitson. Hello Linda. Hello. Lovely to see you. And director James Meller is with us. Hello James. Hello James. Just Great name. Strong, strong name. Just by way of introduction really, just tell us a bit about yourselves because Linda you're in a producer role but you are a, a Halifax fan and have been for a very long time you're involved in the, the Independent Supporters Club as well. Yeah, I am um... In fact, I've been involved with Halifax um, since I was probably about three years old. Really? I, uh, sitting on the step watching all the uh, fans come away from the match at Thrum Hall, which so, it really sparked my imagination about what Thrum Hall was all about because my dad was a soccer supporter and never went to Thrum Hall. So um, it wasn't till 1957 when Johnny Freeman came to town to play for Halifax that uh, I started to go up and watch a, uh, <clears throat> a little bit and uh, it was like a movie star to the children in the district. Wasn't he just? Yeah. And you've had plenty of movie movie stars and the, 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 the current crop could now become movie stars couldn't they? With James's help as well. James just tell us some of your <clears throat> credits. Um, there's some yeah. big ones as well. Yeah, so there's, uh, there's, there's one or two and quite a few nice uh, local ones. So uh, when I started my career, um, uh, quite a few years back now, uh, I started down the road at Kirkstall Road on like work experience on Countdown and programmes like that. Uh, and then went on to work on some BBC dramas like uh, Last of the Summer Wine, uh, did things like London's Burning, Doctors, EastEnders. Uh, and all that was in like an assistant director capacity. So I, I, I built up a whole array of experience. And I guess my the biggest one is uh, I was lucky enough to work on Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Wow. Wow. D d silly question. Did you meet Daniel Radcliffe? I did. And this is actually, I, I can share this true story here. Uh, there was one day we were, on, uh, we were on set and Daniel Radcliffe was uh, showing a few of us magic tricks with uh, some playing cards and it just dawned on me harry potter is teaching me magic in real life and i thought that is <laughs> i thought I i'm gonna take that <laughs> for my kids and grandkids <laughs> I'll, I'll win well i love that one brilliant australia 227 for eight england have taken another wicket england 54 to win uh, uh Australia 54 more runs to win. England need two more wickets to win the first Ashes Test. Sorry to uh, to interrupt, um, Linda. Why does this film need to be made? Do you think? Um, I think it's an important story. Is rugby league, and um, in 1873, I think the the men that broke away from union because they needed um, to get uh, paid for the loss of earnings. I think it was a very, very brave step. It, it was a leap of faith for the, for the men. And um, I just think that uh, it is a story that needs to be told because uh, we gave, we were one of the 22 clubs that gave a rugby league to the world. And how did you get involved with James? How did you recruit James? Um, it happened, well, Tim Swift, Councillor Tim Swift at, at Halifax, leader of the Halifax Council, uh, sort of gave me a nudge on how to, how to pr pr uh, approach about making this film. It's been a germ of an idea for about 10 years now. Really? And I thought, if I don't do it now, I'll never do it because it's a 150-year anniversary. So um, he set me on who to go to for grants and things like that. And we were, I was lucky to get a grant from the Community Foundation. Uh, and um, James's uh, name cropped up a couple of times within conversations with different people. And I, I did want to look, use somebody local, really, because it was important to me that they were local people. And from coming from Halifax, James, you will have been aware, obviously, about the, 
the rugby league within this area 150 years i mean it's a, it's a broad brief isn't it where do you where do you start in terms of visualizing this um yeah it's quite a challenge i mean we're working with the uh the, the york uh, screen yorkshire and um the, the screen uh, screen archives in yorkshire where there's some absolutely incredible footage uh o- over over the past and we're hoping to be able to in- include uh, quite a bit of that within the documentary as well as doing some recreations we want to recreate the first game uh in, in a sort of a visual style which which uh, brings everything to life but we're not just going to look at just the far past we're going to go right up to present day so the highs and lows uh and that, from my memory i remember being 10 year uh, 10 years old and that was in 1988 when they won the big the big 87 sorry <laughs> told off fuba uh so um that year my my dad was deputy mayor of Calderdale so i was actually in the mayor's parlor when uh, the trophy was coming round and I went out onto the balcony as a little 10-year-old and I remember getting squashed, uh, literally squashed by all the, because all the big players came out and I was just a little scrawny little 10-year-old and I just remember the sea of blue and white below me and so I want to try and uh, sort of bring back some of that personal elements in, in, into the project, definitely, because oh, that's, that's a nice connection. Yeah, that's amazing. Is this, will, will this... Will this be a first? Do you know of anything, either of you, do you know of anything similar that's that's come to fruition before now? No. There's different uh, aspects of the game uh, being told, like 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 the Broken Time or the Welsh players coming up to play because of uh, uh, not being able to pick, being picked for their own country and things like that. But uh, not not because we want to involve the town as well. Everybody should be proud of the town, and um, we had a very diverse working, uh, you know, works in in Halifax. There was the carpets. There was the chocolate factories. There were uh, Halifax was famous for lots of things, engineering. So getting that all and you know I, I was just thinking about a 15 minute film to begin with but James yeah. said no way yeah I've sort of got a big bolder ideas I mean I've just come <laughs> how fresh. can you get 150 years in 15 minutes that would be the biggest challenge <laughs> I think yeah maybe that's the promo we'll do the, promo, the 15 minute promo um yeah, I've just come back fresh from Sheffield Documentary Festival, which was a really inspiring event, lots of documentaries from around the world. And uh, so I, I see this as become a... I'd like to see this as a proper feature-length uh, doc, documentary film, not just a short film. So I, I'm, that's why we're doing the crowdfunding, because that way it will enable us to do a lot more uh, with things. So um, we're, we're talking with... Uh, potential uh, famous actor to do some narration uh we're talking with a, a film composer to bring in some not some daniel radcliffe music. not daniel oh. radcliffe no 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 another famous yorkshireman though i'm not saying anything more because right. i don't want to jinx it mm. so uh that's why it's important that's why we launched the crowdfunding on indiegogo to uh really try and uh, get people interested so uh people can uh, get a, a credit on the film so their name can be up there immortalised for just a small donation. So do check it out. Yeah, just clarify that. So have you? Cre- I think you've crowdfunded something before. How how difficult was that and how optimistic are you that this one will be done as well? Um, it's absolutely terrifying to crowdfund. Yes, I did do it for a documentary series uh, called The In-Flight Food Trip, which I made a few years back. In fact, it just launched just before um, COVID hit uh, on Amazon Prime. And with that one, we raised uh, nearly £10,000 for that one. Wow. Uh, but then we were travelling around the world uh, on various airlines, so it was quite an expensive uh, project to undertake. But it was to me to prove that we can do it. And today, I can say that's now been seen in 116 countries. So that's I'm really quite proud of that, that we came out of that small acorn. And I'd like to do the same with this one. So the more we can make, uh, the more we can put on screen. So it's not for people's wages. It's literally uh, so we can make bigger, bolder choices with our filmmaking. But regardless, we will make film. 
So who do you appeal to in terms of the the crowd? Who are the crowd that you will would appeal to, to to try and fund this? Is it, Linda, is it just Halifax Rugby League fans, Rugby League fans in general, people no. who just live in Halifax, West Yorkshire people, Yorkshire people? I, I think it's, it's the Rugby League family. We are a family, and I think this would be a, an ideal venue, really, for anybody to get involved, especially, um, I mean, there's lots of people I still see at matches now that were kicking around... Um, you know, the streets where I lived and all those years ago, you know, 60, 70 years ago, um, that still go to matches. And uh, I think a lot of... Um, I think a lot, a lot of the businesses in Halifax could, you know, would could get involved as well with this. Have you got a target, James, in mind? Um, our, our target at the moment is to raise... Um, Ten thousand mm-hmm. pounds through um, through the crowdfunding, uh, and then hopefully, if if we hit that, then we can extend it. So basically, the more money we're able to raise, the more we're the more expertise we're able to bring in with with uh, crew kit, uh, and the more the more bold we can get with the project. So uh, I, I'm really <laughs> fingers and toes are crossed. <laughs> I hesitate to ask this question, and you, you probably know it's coming. What what happens if you don't reach that target? Does it become a fifteen-minute promo? Um, if we don't reach that target, we will. We're, we're we're looking at other sources as well. There are sponsorship opportunities through the crowdfunding. So if there's local businesses that want to get involved or get their name in the lights, there are opportunities there. So do reach out to myself or Linda to uh, have that conversation because uh, those opportunities are definitely there. The site is Indiegogo. Yes, isn't it? Um, and how do you find once you get on there? How do you find the? So if you search um, either rugby film or uh, the, the current working title is to Halifax and Beyond, but that's just a working title. We will be looking at uh, uh, changing that. So um, as as things progress, and as any documentary starts, you have an idea at the beginning, and then as stories and people come in, it, it changes and. One of the other things is we're hoping to film uh, film some of the players who are currently now living in Australia and New Zealand. So I have filmmaking colleagues out there. So I'm hoping to be able to get those people on screen as well. So it's it's quite an international uh, effort. And uh, we did get a, a donation from somebody on Australia at the weekend. So that was quite exciting. I love the sound of it. It sounds absolutely brilliant. Um, and there are perks available, aren't there? You can be in it. Anyone, someone listening to this who's got nothing to do with Halifax Rugby League or, or whatever could be in this, couldn't they? Yes, absolutely. We've, we're doing several recreation bits, as I say, with like the uh, the first game, and we're doing some things in there with the uh, Calderdale Industrial Museum where we're doing some recreation scenes. So there's lots of opportunities for you to be involved on screen or behind the screen. So do get in touch. And there will be a lot of legends involved, Linda, weren't there? Jamie Bloom was was hopefully going to have a word with us, but he's not available, sadly. Um, so we'll have to do without Jamie tonight. But who are the legends? That have, because a lot of this filming, or some of this filming, has already taken place, hasn't it? Who 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 have been involved, player-wise? Uh, so far, Johnny Lawless and uh, Martin Moana have been in two. Well, that's all you need, don't you? Yeah. Two, two absolute <laughs> legends. Um but part part of the fil- uh, filming will be also not about just the uh, Aussie players and New Zealand players that are all back went back home. There's quite a large group of of um, Aussie and New Zealand players that came in the nineties that still live in Halifax. Uh, one of them, your friend Jamie Bloom. Another one, your friend da- uh, Damien Gibson. Gibbo, yeah, he's not left either. What is no. it that keeps them here? I uh, often ask him. Martin Moana, Freddie Twigelaga still lives it yeah. lives over here. Um, there's um, Frank Watine. Yeah. Um, it's quite a few. Oh, Jim Gannon. Yeah, he's yeah. still here. He They're is, all yeah. still here, and uh, we don't want them to go home. And they're going to be a big, big part of this film, aren't they? Yeah, they'll they'll have a part. Uh, we want to know why they stayed. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah we, we do. We do not? want to know. But yeah. why not? Is what I say. <laughs> why? Why wouldn't and you? And what they're doing now? Yeah. And the I mentioned Happy Valley and Ackley Bridge. The success of those 
shows could could help you in a way, couldn't it? Because obviously the the you'll be bring, it's not just about the rugby as well as about no. the community. It's about the area and that that you can show through the through this documentary. Yeah, absolutely. We want to include the the landmarks of Halifax and Calderdale. That's that's in, intrinsic into this. So I want to make the very much the the lay of the land part of the character within the film. And I think that's quite important. So it's it's really engaging uh, with the local community on that uh, because Calderdale is a beautiful place to live. And uh, when I was growing up, we had there was no filming happening in in Halifax. And what a change we've seen uh, in the last few years. I mean, we've just had Ewan McGregor in, in the town filming for a new Paramount series. Um, obviously on Disney, the Marvel Secret Engage Invasion that's going out uh, uh, this week. So and they filmed at the Peace Hall. So uh, I got to do a bit of sneaking behind the scenes while that was happening. <laughs> I bet was you really did. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. What are you doing? You and McGregor's known to do a, the odd voiceover or two. You didn't fancy going down and uh, tapping him up for it? He's not Yorkshire, though, is he? No, but if uh, Ewan's available, I'm quite happy to have a chat with him. Yeah. <laughs> Australia, just fill you in on the the first Ashes Test. Australia 244 for eight. So England need two further wickets. Australia need 37 runs to win. What sort of time scale, James, have you put on initially? I guess raising the funds, and then when would you expect to start? Filming in, in well, we've we've already, as uh, Linda said, we've already started filming. Uh, but I'm hoping to start filming in earnest from next month. Uh, so re regardless of the crowdfunding, I'm still going to uh, press on and start getting interviews and, and building pieces up because uh, a, a documentary is a big jigsaw puzzle, and you've got to get all the elements in place. And you, it's <coughs> not until after that you go, you see how it all fits together at the end, which is part of the excitement, because you think you're doing one thing and then somebody will come along with an amazing story and then you go, we're going to follow that yes, and, yes. And, and, and see how that unfolds. I was going to say, how prepared are you for this to take you in a completely different direction? Uh, we're going to go with the flow as, as, as much as, as possible and as much as we're able to from the resources we have. So um, I'm, I'm very open to seeing where this will go uh, because at the end of the day, I, I, wa I want this film to be up there with the greats like uh, Senna that came out a few years ago. That was a fantastic documentary. And obviously that was just in purely archive footage, which was an incredible achievement by those filmmakers. So if we can reach anywhere close to that and maybe uh, a few red carpets here and there, I would be very, very happy. <laughs> Have you got a nice dress, Linda, for the red carpet? I'll buy one. <laughs> you haven't got one, I'm sure. Sure, you've probably got a blue and white one, haven't you? Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I bet you have. Where where would that premiere be? Uh, ideally, well, we definitely want to have a, a screening in uh, in uh, ideally Halifax, uh, certainly initially, and then we'll see where else in the world we can take it. So I want this to be not just a film scene in Halifax, but I want this to be something where audiences around the world can connect with Halifax and really put it on the international map where it belongs. Nice. And you mentioned the working title to Halifax and Beyond at the moment. Um, are people able to suggest other titles? I'm quite happy to hear suggestions. We're, 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 we're toying with a, a few ideas. We just like, we needed to have something. We did have another title, but it was like, it was involving a few other things, but that's not quite right. So we, we're, this is what we're working on at the moment. But if anyone has any cool ideas, do get in touch. Yeah, I'm trying to think what about Halley Valley. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> too, too gimmicky, too gimmicky. Just before we let you go, then, Linda, what when it's finished? Yeah. Whenever that might be, and when you are readying yourself for the the premiere, what what do you want this to look like? What have you got in, in your mind? I'll ask James the same question in a second. It might be completely different things, but well, what I, do you want it to look like I, and what what effect do you want it to have? I want it to inspire um, young rugby players to come, well, to start playing rugby and to, to come to play for Halifax and p for people to come down and support Halifax, really. Um, uh, Johnny Lawless said to me uh, a a while back, that um, when he was younger, he only ever wanted to play for Halifax. And uh, his dad uh, said to him one day when he came home from work, 
Leeds want to sign you. They've rung up this afternoon and he said, well, I don't want to play for Leeds. I want to play for Halifax. And he says, but Halifax don't want to sign you. And he says, well, I'll just have to wait till they do. And they <laughs> did, eventually. And that's what I want. <clears throat> There's quite a lot of young Halifax lads playing in Super League now. Love that. James, final word to you. What what do you want it to look like and, and what effect would you like it to have when it's finished? I want it to be inspiration for people, <clears throat> surprising, and something that really makes them think about Halifax and Calderdale and this area of of West Yorkshire uh, uh, in 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 a new light. That it's not just uh, an old working class town. There's so much more uh, to it than that. And uh, yeah, inspiring the next generations of rugby players, filmmakers, uh, storytellers. Yeah, we wish you luck. That's all we can say, really. We really do wish you luck. Just before you go, just give us the, the link again. If anyone wants to to chuck a few quid your way to make this documentary about Halifax Rugby League Club and the, the area to make it bigger and better than it already is at the moment, where, how do people do that? Well, we've got a, um, a landing page website set up called rugbydocumentary.co.uk and the crowdfunding site we're using is Indiegogo. So if you search for uh, Halifax uh, Rugby League on Indiegogo, you'll find it there. James Meller and Linda Kitson, good luck. Thank you. And thank Thank you you for joining us on West Yorkshire Sport Daily. In a moment, we're going to uh, find out how Featherstone Rovers have got themselves a football club. The travel update first of all, though, and in Wakefield, there are temporary...